Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about exporting a virtual machine from TrueNAS and then we're going to take it and import it into a Proxmox machine. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, so here is my Proxmox and here is our TrueNAS. So the first thing we need to do is go down here to the virtual machines. You're going to see there, here's a virtual machine. I have it off. This is a, a Docker host. It's a Ubuntu 2004. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this hard drive in there and we're going to export it. And then we're going to copy it over to the, the Proxmox machine. So the first things we need, first thing we need to do is go down to services in our TrueNAS and turn on SSH. So by default, SSH is turned off. And so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on so we can do this all via the command line. We're gonna enable, let it have root access, root password login for this time being, okay? And so then all we do is go back down here and flip it on. All right, so now this is on. So let's go over here to storage, storage pools, and you're gonna see this volume right here. Okay, so that's the one, that's the ZFS volume that we're going to turn into a raw file and put it into our Proxmox. So let's swing over here to our PowerShell terminal and SSH into this. So here we are SSH into this guy. All right. So first things first, we want to, I'm looking at my commands that I got over here. So the first things first is we want to go ahead and list the, the volumes. And that is a pretty easy command. I just paste it in there. ZFS list dash T volume. And so that's going to show us our Docker host VM. And you'll see that it's a 60 gig five or it's a 60 gig ZFS drive and it's got six gigs. All right, very easy operation here. The next thing is so our Proxmox is this PVR710. Now we need to find the location of this. When it comes to volumes, they're going to be uh, devs. So let's just go to dev. And then we're going to, now that we're in the slash dev. Oops. Now that I'm in slash dev, you'll see all this here. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is there's going to be a zvol right here. So we're going to CD to that zvol. And that's going to have that data drive that we talked about. We're going to go into the data. LS. Boom. And there you're going to see. You're going to see that volume. Now, if you notice when I did an LS on that, that it's not exactly a file, um, but that's just how ZF does, ZFS does their volumes there. So now that we have that location, what we're going to want to do is DD. So um, let's flip back over here to our um, Proxmox machine. So we need to figure out where we want to put this, right? All right. So in our Proxmox, in the storage, we have this Z local ZFS, right? And there's no disks in there. So back in my terminal, Let's just go to the root directory here and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at how Proxmox does it. So it's called rpool. Now, how do I know it's rpool? Um, because I set this up and that's kind of how it works. So if I go to ZFS here in the node, see it says rpool. That's how I know that. So we, we go in that rpool. And 
we've got backups. Right? So I'm just going to end up putting this file right here that we export. Okay. So I've got a command. It's going to be long, and I'm going to explain it to you. So here it is. Let me copy and paste this over here, and I'll explain each part of it. All right. So let's look at this. So we got DD, which is a uh, disk writer utility for uh, Unix operating systems. So we're going to take this volume, that PTE Docker host that we created, and then we're going to we're going to chunk it over with progress, and at this 8196 uh, byte size, I believe. So that's that first part all the way up to the first vertical slash or, right? Let me just, uh, make, let me make this bigger. Yep. So this part up to here is our first command. That's the command we're running locally on this free NAS or true NAS box. <clears throat> then we're going to SSH into our proxmox, use the DD, we're gonna output that to this rpool file dot rar or dot raw using this same byte. Okay? So that will what that will do is basically it's gonna take this Z, ZFS volume and it's gonna take a raw disk image of it. Uh, and instead of putting it locally on this free true NAS, we're actually gonna put it remotely via SSH over to the Proxmox machine. Now, we could do this a slightly different way and go ahead and, and gzip it in there too. So let me let me erase that, or erase what we just had here. And let me put you in another version that's gonna have gzip added to it. All right, so here we have basically that same thing again, where, where we're gonna read the Z volume and we're gonna get a status progress, but we're also going to gzip that and then send it over to the Docker host or over the process machine as a, as a gzip file. So let's just go ahead and do that. Got to enter in my password. And boom, there we go. Let me just go back over here and you'll see there it is. And you'll see that it's got 240 meg copied so far as we, we transfer. Now we're going to just let that set for just a moment and, uh, Come back. All righty, here we go. So there it is copied. Now we'll go back over here and take a look at this and you will see that right here. Let's go ahead and make this guy bigger because we want to be able to see this stuff, right? All right. So we have this gzipped file here, right? So let's go ahead and unzip that. That'll take just a second. And when that's done, we'll have a raw file that is approximately 60 gigs. Okay, so there we have it. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at that. L says L. All right, that's a 60 gig raw file. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is switch over to Proxmox and do some fun with that. Here we are in the Proxmox. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger too. All right. Let's just shrink this down so we get a little bit of stuff. So the first thing we need to do is create a virtual machine for the hard drive to be connected to. So create VM. We're gonna call this 104 because I know I have that available. And I'm going to name it the same as what the other one was called. So PTE Dr. Host. All right. 
104. Next. Okay. So we don't need a system or any, we're not going to use a CD or anything. So we're going to know that Linux is good because we, this is an Ubuntu machine, graphic card, all just fine. Virtual SCSI, totally fine. Now here's where we're going to create a virtual machine and that's totally fine. Um, we're going to flip over here to the ZFS. I'm going to delete this afterwards. So let's not worry about that. Now, let's give it some, some power. Uh, four CPUs. And let's go ahead and 2040A. That's good, good memory. We're going to have a pair of virtualization. That's totally fine right there. And here we are. And finished. That's going to take, <coughs> that's going to take just a second to finish. And we're going to immediately go in and get rid of that virtual that virtual drive that we created. Okay, so it is created. So we go into hardware here, and here's that drive. We're going to go ahead and detach it. And then we're going to go ahead and remove it because we don't need it. Okay, so that is that. <clears throat> now, I want to go over here and point out in the virtual machines on... TrueNAS, if you open this guy up and you look, you will notice that this is a UEFI. Now, when I went through and, and did this, I didn't, I just next, next, next through it. So I've got to change the BIOS here to UEFI BIOS. So let's go and pick UEFI. And if you notice here, it's going to say, hey, you need a disk. So we're going to do that too. Hit OK. We're going to go add, add UEFI disk. We're going to put that in our ZFS pool and boom. So there's our ZFS UFI. So now this machine is ready for us to do the import operation. So we go back over here and we are in our Proxmox in the command line. And we're going to import it. So we use the QM command, import disk 104, which is the ID of the machine that we created, the file, and where we want to store it. Okay. So let's just flip back over here and, and just take a look at this again. So 104, this is where I get that. And the storage location, we're going to do this local ZFS storage location. And that's this right here. And boom, this is going to go through an operation. It's going to take all these things. And because it's a raw disk, it's just going to be a raw drive on ZFS. And we'll see how that comes out. Give it a few minutes and everything will be good. All right, there you go. Successfully imported disk. All right, so let's go ahead and flip back over to our Proxmox. And you will see right here, unused disk. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that guy and click edit. And SCSI is totally fine. Default cache, whatever is appropriate for you to use. And you'll see there's a disk. Go ahead and click add. And then we're going to go over to the options. And we want to choose the boot order. So we go to the boot order. See, here's our new SCSI drive. We're going to just pull that up to the top. Hit OK. And there you have it. Now. If you wanted to start on boot, by the way, you can go ahead and click that right here. So let's go to console. And power this baby up. Cross your fingers, everything works fine. There you go. It's coming up. Now I'm going to log in. Boom. Here we are logged in. Now we're going to just do a IP space A and you're going to notice that this ENS 18 is down and that is our new our, our ethernet for this machine. So technically right now 
there's no IP address. So if you were to go to a website or whatever, or go try to get to this, there's no actual IP address. So what we need to do is fix that. Being that this is an Ubuntu machine, what we're gonna do is uh, go into the net plan and fix the problem. Because what happened is the old virtual machine, the network adapter was named different. So sudo, oops, let's just go back over here, sudo nano etc net plan zero zero installer config dot yaml. Okay. Now we're gonna need that password again. Take me a second to type that in. Boom. Okay. Um, let me just pop this out into another console. Make this possibly easier to read. All right. So you see right here where it says Ethernet as ENP. 0s4 that is what the old ethernet adapter was called so if you remember ours is called something different so let's exit back out of here and do that ip space a again and you'll know that ours is ens18 so we'll go back in there and we'll change that to ens18 Save the file. Boom. Now we're going to need to apply this net plan. Boom. All right. There you go. We'll do an IP space A again. You will see that the state is up. And you will also see that we have an IP address. Awesome. So this virtual machine was a Docker host, so we do the Docker. I can just roll up here and I've got a PS Docker, right? You'll see there are my Docker containers, right? All right, so because we'll get into Portainer and it is running on port 9000. So we'll go ahead and type in this IP address and port 9000. We just shrink this down over here, we'll open up a new tab. And we will type in 192.168.31.69 colon 9000. Okay, 9000. And here we are, Portainer. Let's just go ahead and log into my Portainer. Containers. Boom, boom, boom. There you have it. There I have my Portainer with the Docker. And it's and we moved this virtual machine from TrueNAS to Proxmox. All right, that's all there is to it. You can take and you can export virtual machine from TrueNAS Beehive and import it into uh, Proxmox. Now, technically you could do this in other uh, virtual operating system systems. So for example, um, you know, if you want, those, those are raw files, so you can take that raw file and you can convert it in different things. So if you wanted to make it into a VMDK or if you needed to make it into a VHDX, you could do that. Uh, you just need to use some other converting tools, but Proxmox is super easy, super awesome. Uh, and uh, DD is a command you could use to export um, hard drives from other systems. If that was a Windows virtual machine, this would work the same way. Okay, so I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com, and this has been another tutorial on Proxmox and TrueNAS. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and hit a like and subscribe to this channel, and I put out weekly tech tutorials, and if you really want to help me out, you can go ahead and buy me a cup of coffee. Every little bit of help helps to uh, support the channel and everything. We'll see you next week on GiveMeTheGeek.com.